Let's look in detail into the workshop feature on Moodle. Hello everyone, in this video, let's learn about the workshop feature on Moodle Learning Management System. The workshop activity on Moodle is an effective peer assessment tool where students can learn by evaluating their peers. The evaluation is done based on certain criteria which are set by the faculty. The students will have an opportunity to evaluate their peers as well as they might get an opportunity to evaluate themselves based on these criteria. Even though the assessment is done by students, the faculty will have full control over the evaluation. They can reassess the submissions and regrade with the exact scores. So let's get into how to set up a workshop activity on Moodle. First of all, let's create an activity by clicking on add an activity or resource. Then select workshop. So we are going to build a workshop right here. First, you have to give a workshop name and then give a description about what to do in that workshop. If you want to display description on the course page, you can tick this box. Next comes the grading settings where you can decide how you want the submissions to be graded. There are four standard methods. We'll use the simple number of errors which is good for a basic workshop. Workshops have two grades. The grade students get from submitting and the grade they get for the quality of their assessment. I'm choosing 80 as the grade for submission, 50 as the pass mark, 20 as the grade for assessment and 10 to pass. You can also choose decimal places in grades over here. Next is submission settings. Teachers can give instructions for submissions over here. And in submission types, teacher can decide how students want to submit, whether as online text or as file attachments. If file attachment is enabled, teacher can set a maximum number of attachments, type of attachments allowed, and the maximum size for submission. You can also decide to allow submissions after the deadline if this is important to you. So, in my case, I don't want file attachments as the students are required to submit a link in this particular task. So, I'm selecting the online text only. Next is assessment settings. You can give basic instructions for the peer assessment here. Tick the box if you want students to have a chance to assess their own work. Next is feedback, where teachers can choose to add an overall conclusion at the end of the workshop activity. Example submissions can be useful, especially if your students are new to the workshop and needs to practice assessing. Next is availability, where you can set the opening and closing dates for submissions and assessments. You can set the dates after ticking the enable option. If you tick this box, it will automatically switch to the next phase after the submission deadline. One thing you have to ensure here is that the open for assessment should not overwrite the submission deadline. In common module settings, you can make this module available for particular groups. For that, you will have to create a group first. We will look into that later. For now, I'm choosing no groups. And then in restrict access, I'm adding a few activity completion restrictions so that only if they complete these tasks, they'll be able to open this workshop. We can also set whether the students must or must not complete these activities or all or any of these activities. Now there are other types of restrictions like date, grade, user profile or set of restrictions. Next is activity completion where I am setting as show activity as complete when conditions are met. So the student must at least view this activity in order to complete it. Now if you want to choose a grade, a minimum grade for submission or assessment to mark this as complete, you can set that too. Now let's save these settings. So we have successfully created our workshop activity.
As you can see here, there are four phases for a workshop activity. The first phase is setup phase, then comes submission phase, then assessment phase, and finally grading evaluation phase. And after that, the workshop is closed. So right now we are in the setup phase. We have already set up the workshop description and the instructions for submission. Next, we have to edit assessment form. For that, click over here. This workshop is using simple number of errors. So we can write a short phrase explaining what the student is looking for and choose our word for wrong or correct. For example, I am giving description as have they mentioned event details clearly. So this is actually the criteria student needs to evaluate. So if they have done that, they can give the word for success which is yes. And if that particular student haven't done that, they can give the word for error that is no. You can also assign weights for each question. You can give more weights to some assertions and less weight to others. Like this, you can give different criteria based on which the student will be able to assess their peers. They'll be answering whether the criteria are met and model will automatically calculate the grades according to weightage of each criteria. The faculty must be very careful while selecting criteria because the effectiveness of this workshop activity purely depends on the criteria you set. Let's save and close and now we are ready to switch to the next phase. Before going into the next phase, let's see what the students will see when we are in the setup phase. So this is the student view of setup phase. It will show that the workshop is currently being set up. Please wait until it is switched to the next phase. While teacher is preparing the workshop, this is what the student sees. He cannot access the workshop until the teacher switches to the next phase. So let's come back to the teacher view and switch to the next phase which is submission phase. When we switch to submission phase, students will then be able to submit their work. Now let's see what the student views in this particular phase. So when we have switched to submission phase, they will have an option to add their submissions. They can give a title and submit their content. So here in this activity, I have asked them to submit a link. After submitting, they can click on save changes. Let's go back to the teacher view and here we haven't set up scheduled allocation. Click over there. There are three types of allocation. The first one is manual allocation, which means we can decide who assess whose submission. This is fine if you have a very small class or very small group of students. We can use the drop downs to choose the reviewers and reviewees. Random allocation is useful if you have a very large group or if you don't want to be personally involved in these selections. You can choose either a number per submission or a number per reviewer. We could also allow students to assess without having submitted anything and also add self-assessments. Now, scheduled allocation means that as soon as the deadline for submissions has passed, the workshop will send out the submissions to be assessed. Again, you have the same allocation settings like we saw in random allocation. So I'm setting scheduled allocation by clicking on save changes. Now it's a green tick next to set up scheduled allocation. In this video, you won't be seeing a green tick next to allocate submission. This will be green only if each and every student submit their work. So let's leave it like that and switch to the next phase. In the assessment phase, students will evaluate their peers and our teacher can simply monitor the process. Let's take a look at the student view in the assessment phase. The students will be able to assess submissions that are assigned to them. For that, they need to click on Assess and they will be able to see the student submission on top. And then below that, they'll have the assessment form where they will evaluate each assertion and give their comments on that particular assertion. They can also give an overall feedback for the author and save the grades. 
Once assessment is done, they can see green ticks below assessment phase. They can also reassess these submissions before going into the next phase. Now let's take a look at the teacher view. If you scroll down, you can see name of students, their submissions and the grades they have got for submitting the work. The assessment grades will be calculated only in the next phase which is grading evaluation phase. So let's switch to the next phase. The assessment grade is calculated by comparison with the best assessment, which means the grade for assessment is determined by comparing the grade you gave for each submission with the grades other participants gave. And the comparison can range from very strict to very lax. If you are not sure, leave it as fair the default. Click on Recalculate Grades to calculate the grades. When you scroll down, you'll be able to see the grade for submission and grade for assessment received for each student. Here, teacher can edit the grades if needed. For example, if you think that this grade is not the correct grade for that particular submission, you can click on that. Then scroll down and click on Override Grade for Assessment and regrade it. So if you save and close, you'll be able to see the edited grades like this. Let's take a look at the student view of grading evaluation phase. During this time, students are prompted to be patient and wait until grades are calculated. So let's go back to the teacher view and switch to the next phase which is close workshop. When the workshop is closed, the two grades will appear in the gradebook. Here is the student view in closed phase. They will be able to view both grades, grade for submission as well as the grade for assessment. Let me give you a quick tip. If you want to avoid partiality or bias while evaluating, it is always better to hide author name and reviewer name. For that, let's go back to the teacher view. Here click on settings, click on permissions and there, if you just scroll down, you will see activity workshop. Here you can set permissions. For example, if you don't want students to export submissions, you can remove student from here. Just click on the delete icon and click on remove. Now the student won't be able to export submissions. The same way if you scroll down you will see a setting view author names. Here student is included. So if you remove student from here, the students will no longer be able to see the author names. That is they won't know whose submission they are evaluating. The same way you can see a setting view reviewer names student is already not included in this so that they won't see who reviewed their submissions so to sum up the assessment criteria plays a vital role in workshop activity it should be clear and easy to understand the workshop activity can be a very effective peer assessment tool if implemented correctly so see you in the next video thank you for watching